everybody. Welcome to Kirsty Interviews. So today I'm interviewing Amy from Brisbane. So she's a FIFO wife um, here and we're going to find out a little bit about Amy and her FIFO family and some of the tips she's going to share with you today. And I'm delighted to have Amy on. She's very active in the Facebook groups and really helpful um, to uh, the other families out there. And that's why I wanted to have her on um, with me today. So hi, Amy. Tell us a little bit hi. about your um, background and your FIFO family? So we started FIFO when my oldest started prep, just before she started prep, and she's in year six this year, so we've been doing it quite a few years. Uh, it was a little bit easier to start with. We are doing one week on, one week off. Um, we are now doing eight weeks on, four weeks off, so it's a lot harder. We have three children, so 11, nine, and two, um, so which is a challenge, but we do what we have to do for, for that sort of thing yeah. as well. So it makes it, yeah. makes it interesting. <laughs> it does. It does. There's always something happening, isn't there? And always. what do you find uh, really are your real struggles, either now or you have been over that time? Because that's such a long period of time you've been doing it. The biggest struggle would probably be communication and keeping those lines of communication open. Um, I think we all get into a habit, even even in a normal relationship, whether your husband working at home, you get in the, the mundane day to day, oh, how are you, dear? Yeah, I'm good. You know what I mean? We don't really talk about our days. And it's taking that step back and actually getting, opening that communication up again. Um, having your partner whose mind's away for eight weeks, having him involved in the decisions, the day to day decisions as well I think it's extremely important and extremely extremely big struggle um, both the girls have like a little bit of learning difficulties mm -hmm. so we um, I, I was in the state I was in a process of going I'll just do this this and this and I do it and he trust what I would do because he knew I did what was best for the kids um, but I was also keeping him out of that loop of what was actually happening at home so I've now taken a step back and I don't don't decide or make a decision without talking to him, talking him through it first. And usually it is what I've decided to do um, or what I've thought would be best for them. But taking that step back, making sure that he's got that communication, he feels more invested in our lives as well. So he's got he feels I know what's happening at home and I know what's happening with the kids and yeah. he'll think of ideas mm -hmm. while Lily's like, oh, actually, why don't you try this with them? This might work. And I'm like, oh, I didn't actually think of that. Um, so opening, opening those lines of communications and consistently thinking about that is, is probably one of the hardest struggles because you need to, to have that thought process happening um, at all times. Otherwise, you mean... What, what's a relationship without communication? That's exactly right. And that connection. And as you say, um, I think it's brilliant how he then thinks about things that you might not have thought about. Whereas otherwise, he would just be getting on with the job knowing that you're taking great care of the kids. But this way, he's actually being a more vital part of the family. Yeah. yeah. And it's having that proactive and um, him stepping in and like he, he was underground. So he emailed me the other day because we were discussing um, routine about the kids and getting our oldest ready for high school and how we're going to do that. And he's like, well, this works for me. How about we try that for the kids? And I'm like, oh, that would actually be a really good idea. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good because it opens up that that sort of thing. So he's, he is thinking about his family a lot more being away. Um, and I think they get such in a routine when they're away that they go, oh, you mean I don't want to think about it because I miss them more. Yeah. Um, and, and it's such a bad habit for them to be in, but it's a survival technique for them to be away. Um, but we need to be the other way and being proactive with each other and, and especially with what's happening at home and what's happening with the kids. So when he comes back, it's not like he's it's two months away. Yeah. Like how much can change in a child's life in two months? That's right. um, so making sure that he knows what's going on. Um, we have boards all over the house that have a morning routine, afternoon routine. Um, each of the kids have a board as well. So any certain activities they have on, it's all on there. So he goes, oh, okay, I can do this and this. Not, not take the day off. I'm going to go do this for you. Yeah, and that'll make a huge difference for you and the kids, I could imagine. That is such a good tip and such an important tip. So it's not just about communication. It's like, how can we stay involved and so that everyone benefits? Yeah, yeah. that's really awesome. So when, because um, I know you've read my book, Separated by Work, how did that 
do you think help you and your family when um, you were able to read that? Even though you've um, been doing it for a long time already. I was in a really bad, probably headspace before I got your book, and it was it was my thinking was wrong. So I always first got onto Pam and then onto you, which was fantastic. Um, and my like everyone would say to me, "You're a single mum." You mean, and it's it's the thought process that goes through your head and the way you set your life up. And they're like, you, "You're like a single mum for these eight weeks." And how do you cope when he's there? And are you ready to send him back? And I'm like, they're, they're not the thoughts I should be having. It should be okay. So how can I keep my relationship active, um, which you mean there's fantastic tips in, in there for that. And um, how can I open that line of communication, which you mean is so important, but also, um, what else was it? Where else was I going with that one? Um, but that proactive on both sides, instead of it just being, you mean like, I'm always here with the kids, I'm always doing something. So I'm always got that thing and I was, I was at a point where I was, I'd overschedule myself. Yeah. Um, so I would be, I would have, um, I'd have my, my boy who's two, I'd have him in, I'd have him in gymnastics and swimming and kinder music. Plus he was going to daycare three days a week. And on those three days, I'd be making sure I'm doing this, 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 and this. Um, and then I had, the girls had morning and afternoon activities at school. So I think Monday morning and Friday afternoon were the only afternoons I had nothing on. Um, every other every other day I had something on. So I was at the school at seven o'clock. Yeah. I was picking the kids up at 4.30. So yeah. it was, you know what I mean? And it, I'm just like, no, I need to, you mean? And that's where I've taken that step back and going, you know what? I need to take that time for me. I need to make sure I'm putting that effort into our relationship. Um, I need to make sure that, that um, I'm not keeping myself busy for the wrong reasons. Uh, yeah. And that I was doing that because I was, I was feeling a void. Um, that shouldn't have been felt that way. It should have been, yeah. should have been with with the relationship and working on that and the, the communication. So yeah, and and you because I, I, in the book I talk about keeping your cup full and what's in there is for you. What overflows is for everyone else. And yep. it sounds like before you started doing that, everybody was in your cup, and there wasn't, <laughs> wasn't much left for you at all. No, I had everyone in the cup going like this, splashing it all out. <laughs> We'll just throw it all out, okay? <laughs> um, so yeah, I, do, I take more time for me. Um, I make sure that, um, like, if I want to go for it, like, so I put my son in care two days a week, so I make sure that I'm doing something for me at least one of those days. The other, I go help at the school um, with the girls, so which is which is good because then they enjoy me having having it's me in the, the school. The difference again. between a full life and a satisfied life, isn't it? And and you yep. get more satisfied we feel then the more we have to give to everybody else and we're better role models as you said we're more resourceful we can think of better ways to do things we can think of better ways to communicate um so yeah it, it really does work when you take a step back and go okay well what do i need and then i've got so much more for everyone else yeah yeah, yeah. And, um and a good thing is that i was starting to schedule in um, making time for me, even if it was 10 minutes a day, whether that was some meditation or watching TV without children around or um, you mean going for a walk or you mean just making sure that I'm taking that time for me because as a mum in general, it doesn't matter if you're FIFO, if you're normal, whatever, whatever you're single mum, you still need that time for yourself. You need to make that time and put yourself as a priority yeah. at least once a day. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's excellent advice. And, and, you know, it doesn't matter how old your kids are, just to take a step back and check in. So yep. very important. So what are you grateful for, for being FIFO? Because there's so many, we hear so many things on the negative side, but I also know there's a lot of positives um, of living this life choice. What, do you, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful. I get to be home with the kids. I get to spend time with the kids. I get to make sure that um, their homework's done every night. I get to make sure they go to school every night. I make sure, like, I can go in and have an interview with their teachers halfway through the day. Um, I can go in and help in the canteen. So the girls love that because they get free canteen that day. They're like, oh, we have food. <laughs> um, I'm also grateful that when my husband is home, he's home. Yes. Like, um, when he was at home and he was working here in Brisbane, he was doing six days a week. Mm. So, and he'd be like, Sunday, I don't want to know. I don't want to know about you. I don't want to know about the family. It's I don't want to know about the kids. 
Yeah. Um, even though he'd come home of an afternoon and he'd still play with the kids, um, it was that weekend where we kind of really wanted that family time and the kids had that time off. He, he wasn't interested. Um, but when he's home, he'll do the kids' school drop-offs, pickups. He will do their sports. He will make sure that um, he'll, he'll pack their lunches. He'll do their hair. He'll, you know, he, he'll, he gets in there and does everything. Um, I mean, he does overdo it. And I do tell him to try to, I mean, this is your time off. Take, take a step back. He goes, no, that's what we're going to work for. I have a day off at work so I can stop. I'm like, you yeah. need to stop. When you're at home as well. Um, we make sure we do, like, because my son's in care, we make sure every week that he's home, we have a date day. So um, while the kids are at school, we do that. We try to make time, um, because he's home for the four weeks, we try to make time where we go away for a night or two with just us and no kids. Um, we make sure that there's family time, so a very proactive family time and um, that we're actually we both as a family making that family connection and spending that time as a family and we weren't doing that in a normal lifestyle we weren't doing it um and you mean we're grateful for FIFO for giving that to us that that extra time and the the gratefulness of him of having the kids and kids being excited to see him and um you mean yeah cool dad's home and um sit them jumping on his lap or playing games with him yeah. But that's, that's all the stuff we can be grateful for. Even though there's sacrifices, you're right, there's a lot of things to be grateful for.